women matters with setting priorities. Let's see what priorities we will come up with. First, uh, as always, the check-in. Uh, the, how do you say, the one who uh, got up latest can start. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Victoria. <laughs> All right, well, before I go back to sleep, um, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, my name is Victoria. <laughs> And I live in California and <laughs> it's very early for me, but um, fortunately I have my espresso, my, no, my, um, my cafe latte. And um, I am in the middle now of um, Nel Mezzo del Camin di Mia Vita. <laughs> Mi trovo nel una selva scura. Um, so I'm in the middle of my Dante series, lecture series, and um, to, tomorrow night is the um, is completely dedicated to the Inferno, and um, and there are about three hundred and fifty slides, images of about ten different artists through the last seven hundred years who have been fascinated by the Inferno, and. I'm going to have about 10 music clips um, of composers who have been fascinated by the Inferno for the last 700 years. So it's, it's really exciting. It's amazing to see this whole creative history, how, how, how the imaginations of all these different um, composers and artists have been captured by reading Dante. It's, it's quite extraordinary. And very few of them are um, Italian. So that's also interesting that it's most of them are um, French or, um, or English. So it's, that's also interesting. Anyway, um, <laughs> if I keep going, I'll end up giving a lecture. So, um, but it's, it's exciting work and it's really, um, I'm dedicating the whole series to my old professor at Harvard, um, Dante Della Terza, and he died in April. So, um, it it's feels very emotional because it sort of takes me back to my college days. And um, anyway, so I'm, I'm realizing yet again that even though I always dread my work apropos of priorities, um, once I get into it and stop procrastinating, then I really love it. And then I realize that that, that should be my priority all the time because I, I love it and people respond to it. So it seems to be the right thing. So enough, um, I always talk too much when I'm tired. Oh, die Wertschätzer sind here. <laughs> oh, here we are. <laughs> One Wertschätzerin. Um, I'm gonna pass immediately to you, Wertschätzerin, so you can jump right in. <laughs> um, so <laughs> here we go to Gertraud, just that we're checking in. You're muted. So, hi. <laughs> Danke. Um, I apologize for being late. And can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, um, I might switch computers. I was uh, in another space. I'm just coming home from the Netherlands where I did my second um, training, second weekend training for WeFlow. So yeah, I'm just landing from another world. <laughs> uh, maybe later a bit more. So Christine, you're a brave, safely, I hope, and can take on. The others have already all sh uh, shared. Yeah? No? Yeah. So who, who not? Everybody not except Victoria and you. And there is a black uh, window here. I don't know who that is, but go, go ahead, Beatrice. So. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Um, 
I am feeling the, I don't know if backlash is the right word, um, but I'm gonna use it. The backlash of not resting and recuperating right after my trip. And I've now been going for two and a half weeks um, with my schedule full of work and and some social things, some things were very lovely social things, but I haven't really had, I've maybe had one day, maybe two in total that I could really have to myself and try to rest and also try to, you know, do the dishes and the laundry. <laughs> um, so I'm very tired and feeling like I'm a bit on a hamster wheel and, um, yearning for a break so that's that's why I'm I, priorities is an interesting an interesting uh topic if that's gonna be our topic today because it's I think that's very complicated for me especially because I have um many jobs right now I just got I've got uh three families that I work for doing school pickups. Um, there's a fourth family that might call on me if they need me. I'm also doing an after school outdoor program in the park once a week. I'm also helping, still helping my friend start the nonprofit and he really wants to get things going a bit quicker now and start programming. And then I'm doing, supporting the other nonprofit. <laughs> so all in all, that's that's um, six jobs. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I would like to prioritize my own well-being and I would like to prioritize my own art projects and I would like to prioritize rest and stillness. Um, but it doesn't seem feasible right now. And that's really frustrating because what I want to prioritize circumstantially is not something I can prioritize. I guess I'm going into the topic that's more than check-in. <laughs> but anyway, my check-in is... <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling very bogged down by all the things that I have to do. And I love all the things that I do, but I'm just exhausted all the time and um, don't feel like I can take a break. So that's where I am. Um, and dreaming of my trip. I wish I could go back. <laughs> um, I will pass to Hanali. Thank you, Beatrice. I love the way that you speak about your trip because I'm also in the process of, I've been invited to attend a event in Berlin in October, and I'm fully vaccinated now, so I'm trying to see if I can get a visa in time, and that will also take me to Italy most probably, and Switzerland. Um, so I'm also in that trip mode, but just on the other side of yours. So I'm also looking forward to that, the movement, it's good for me. Um, many good things are happening. Um, you've just got an incredible, um, co-create a partner to supply us with uh, AR and VR technology for one of our initiatives, which I'm really excited about. It's gonna be lots of art involved in that as well. And yeah, many other things as well, but I'm grateful to be here with all of you. And here it's very hot. So I'm also in that, in the change of the season. Um, we've almost skipped spring, so we're straight into summer. And so everybody's in that summer mood, people go out and about, which is also, again, movement. So I love that. And I'll pass to Christine. Good morning. Um, doesn't seem like too much has happened in the past two weeks, so um, I feel good. Uh, I'm starting to read the book. Um, I think the name of it is The Life We're Given by Mark uh, Nepo. You're probably familiar with his book. Um, and I'm enjoying that. Uh, I, I'm doing it as an audio book. So I find myself going back and listening again and again and again uh, to the section several times. Um, but I feel like I'm going to get something from that book. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned last time that our daughter moved back. Did I mention that? And then she's gonna start working with Tom. Okay, so um, she's still waiting to get her license before she can start working. And uh, this is a time of year I like to start uh, cooking more. 
because the days are shorter. So I'm, you know, naturally kind of end my day a little bit earlier. By end my day, I mean, you know, settle down into being at home a little earlier uh, in the afternoon. And um, yeah, it's been fun to uh, do some more cooking and baking and stuff around the house. Yesterday, I decorated for Halloween, uh, which I used to love to do when I had young children, would decorate uh, quite a bit. But now I'm down to a few pumpkins <laughs> and a few uh, fall leaves and a few other things like that. Um, but it's fun to get. I think what I like is just the the change. You know, I, I like the change. And I wonder why I don't change things up more often. You know, usually between Christmas decorations and fall, there's not much that I do to change how the house looks. So I was wondering why that is. I could do a lot of other things, but it's work. You know, that's part of it is bringing down the boxes and sorting through things and whatnot. So I'm trying to make it more fun and easier on myself so I don't have to make it into a chore. But did that yesterday. It was fun. And I will pass off to uh, Monia. Yes, so well, for me, it's been three very unusual days. Uh, on Sunday, I set my priorities. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the phrase, I love it, uh, the phrase, not my circus, not my monkeys. And I decided that the integral forum was not my circus anymore. Uh, in particular, the saloons. And I uh, will return my membership by the end of the year, which is after 20 years, I think that's long enough. Maybe I'm too old because they have been changing. I was just uh, taught podio and now I should be taught teams and so on. So they are changing a lot of the way they communicate and I don't feel that really changes the content of the communication. Anyway, so I finally decided again, because we tried that a couple of years ago, three years ago, I believe, to pass on the salon management to somebody younger, because it's, it's ridiculous to still, but they all rely on me and it's, uh, yeah, I have now, my priorities have changed. And I'm, uh, I'm sure Andrew Holacek was one of the ignitions for that. Uh, his Dreams of Light, uh, I'm still very fascinated and I have about 500 books, five more books on the same subject, on meditation. So I'm really, maybe I'm, I'm not really going on a three year retreat, but it's a sort of inner retreat I've decided to go on. And that's unusual for me. And yeah, I feel sort of relieved. And there is also more energy all of a sudden in the body. I walk differently. So maybe it, it was a heavy burden on my shoulders and I didn't even notice. Anyway, after things will have settled down because now everybody now don't do it. And so after things will have settled down, uh, I will maybe after a year or so take another look. And the only Zooms I have not canceled is the women because I will stay with the women uh, because I found that nourishing and yeah, not that much work. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> um, okay, I pass on to Heidi. So I'm the last, seems to me, unless Gertrude, you want to say some more? No, okay. Yeah, uh, I said before that my life has changed uh, in many ways and priorities probably are changing. And it's almost two weeks now that there's a family with five children here. And um, it's really pleasant. 
They are beautiful children. The, the adult um, boy is really also a help, great help. And you, we can discuss things and so on. They're very um, eager to learn, the older one and also the young ones. And uh, yeah, it's, I feel like a little bit reminded of my own family when I was a child. We were five children, you know, so uh, it reminds me uh, cooking and uh, eating together and, you know, these things. It's, it's so far, I, I'm really enjoying it. And it seems to become a more priority than, as I said before, writing articles and doing websites and all this stuff. It seems to me boring now, like a duty that I should do these websites, you know. Okay. I still love to talk with you. That's a different thing than afterwards doing the work, timestamps and stuff like this, you know? And I might just not do it, we will see. Um, yeah, priorities. Uh, Monia and Beatrice, uh, you have already said something about priorities. Shall we go on and you might share what priorities you have or you have got did they change? And maybe what is the perspective? And maybe what makes us change our priorities? Also, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can start, Monia. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, what made it change my priorities? Well, uh, it's, I remember that I will be 80 in November and I don't need to continue the way I continued for the past 20 years. And as I mentioned, it was one of the books I read because I have been trying, or I have been going around lucid dreaming for quite some time and it was I have lots of books and it was frustrating and then I found the book by Andrew Holacek uh, the dreams of light uh, which gives you daytime practice so how the reality of your waking experience may also be a dream and all of a sudden I got creative and decided uh, I will use the symbols I see in my waking mind and interpret them according to the dream books because in your in, there are lots of books about your dreams and your symbols and what is what and I decided well why couldn't I do that with my waking uh, mind uh, so what really catches my attention, and then I looked it up, and that was quite uh, interesting. Uh, first of all, I've never read about that, that anybody does that. And secondly, uh, there were quite some results. Uh, so it's not that much of a difference, maybe. Uh, what catches your attention in your waking mind? and what appears in your dreams. There are not the same symbols, but uh, they have the same uh, content. And that was quite something new. And I don't dream lucidly anymore before than before, but uh, I'm quite fascinated in, in continuing in Holacek's book. And I'm going to, to his website today and see what else he offers because he is really an experienced Buddhist meditator and he seems very, um, not like all these other gurus, he seems authentic to me. He appears authentic to me. So a book caused me to change my priorities and old age or feeling feeling bored or exhausted or tired and yeah that's about what i can say about read setting your priorities that's about all yeah um 
when I hear Beatrice, I feel almost, I feel great, quite a lot of compassion. Uh, and I really wish she, uh, you would find uh, time for yourself because your health, uh, you are still young, but nevertheless, uh, you have to watch what you are. And, and stress is one of the worst facts that shortens your life, is my opinion. Okay, that's what I have to participate in. I pass on to whoever feels like talking. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm in a big conflict right now because ever since, well, actually, ever since I was a little girl, I've felt this powerful calling to um, some kind of spiritual work. And I mean, I felt it since I was like three years old, and I never really could figure out what I was supposed to do about it. So it's, I've gone through my life sort of every now and then feeling really pulled apart by <clears throat> conflicting desires. And um, I have to say, Monia, I would love to be, either have the, the courage or the <laughs> resources or whatever it is, the combination of factors that, so that I could just say, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm just going to study these things and I'm going to read these things and I'm going to, um, what I'm doing right now is a kind of, um, apropos of hamster wheels, like Beatrice said, um, I, well, this weekend was a very good example. I got four full scholarships to attend four retreats, all of which were this weekend. <laughs> and most of them were all happening simultaneously. And um, so I was at one point, um, I sent a photo to Beatrice, <laughs> you should share it. Oh, you have it, there it is. I was on three, three, um, <laughs> three devices, three computers at the same time. Um, and so <laughs> I would put them on mute or, or have some softer than others. And then when I felt like it, the topic was really calling me, then I would, you know, put mute the other ones and jump on and jump back and forth. Um, anyway, it was totally crazy. But what I realized in the whole, the whole experience was how, voracious my appetite is right now like I could literally um and if I have something some kind of meeting at six in the morning that's um you know some kind of a workshop or a retreat I'm up like a shot whereas if I have to get up at six in the morning because I have so much work to do um it's really hard <laughs> like I, can, I keep procrastinating to get out of bed so um so in terms of priorities, I'm, I'm actually wondering what, how, how to make decisions because when I feel really drawn, so drawn by something and so called, then it feels like it's, it's from a spiritual point of view, it's really what I'm meant to be doing. And yet um, it's, you know, it's, it's I, I'm still in my own profession and in my own world, um, you know, so, and I, I feel like it would be irresponsible to just sort of like jump off the face of the earth and nobody would know um, what happened to these events that I'm, you know, publicizing. So, so it's difficult. Cause I, I, the, I mean, to me, the, the issue of priority comes with calling it's um, you know, what you feel in your innermost being um, and being true to that. But in my case, it's um, it's a real jumble. It feels like a spiritual schlut off and Lund that's become my, my motto now since um anyway that's like an in 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 joke between me and monia <laughs> so uh victoria you mentioned voracious appetite for what for um well that's a great question maybe you should uh, be my that's my i always <laughs> so but this this must be answered what is the well it's for I mean, in the in the big picture, it's it's a voracious appetite for enlightenment, but that's like the long term goal. Um, so right now, it manifests as um, as learning and 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 um, and any any time it's 
I mean, like I use as a criterion, sort of arbitrarily, if I, well, it's not totally arbitrary. If I, if I apply for a scholarship for something and I get it, because um, there, there are long applications. It's not just saying, you know, I can't pay for this. It's a, you have to write essays and all kinds of stuff. Lots of hoops. Um, I feel like if I get one, then I'm being validated by the, the teacher or the, or the group of teachers or whatever. And so I, the voracious appetite is just to, um, I feel like there's so much wisdom out there. And I feel like I'm being called to bring diverse traditions of wisdom together um, in some way, that's still kind of amorphous. I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but I feel like somehow there's something I'm being called to right now. It's the, it's like planting the seeds. And then some, you know, once I've got, well, I don't know if I'm getting the seed. I don't know. Maybe you can help me <laughs> figure that out. Again, I would recommend Andrew Holacek to you because he says exactly that. And you can't find enlightenment. It's already in you. And this is something that really got me to change my priorities. Yeah. It's an unusual book. And yeah. But... Uh, as long as you and another what I but he keeps just re repeating and repeating and repeating, you can't you can't find enlightenment in intellectually or with your mind. It's something of your body mind. And as women, uh, I feel it's natural for a woman to be more in her body and to. Ken Wilber called it the centaur, so the body and the mind as one. And just to get intellectually in, enlightened, it never happens. And I believe that's, that's really what it is. That's just, it's not my wisdom, it's the wisdom I accepted from somebody else. But I would like to pass it on to you, Victoria. Thank you. I know Thank this voracious, you. I know this appetite, I know it. It's, and I even had it this summer and my stomach couldn't just take it anymore. So that was one signal, my body signaled my mind, get down. Yeah, okay. Thank you for listening. No, thank you. Can you, could you um, follow up with an email with the names that you said and, the, and also the wisdom? Yeah, thank you. Um, I might <laughs> go next. Uh, I'm just coming from a weekend. Um, this is um, so-called stewardship training. Um, one day, maybe you remember when uh, Aiko was here for a teaser for little introduction and it, it's the training uh, for not only that <laughs> but for for that work and it was the second weekend and from Thursday to yesterday night so I came here today uh, and this weekend there was included a Mondo Zen, uh, what do you call it, Monja? Um, Einweihung. <laughs> so the initiation. Yeah, something like an initiation. Mm -hmm. Mondo Zen, this is uh, with koans. And um, so I. That's why I jumped in is I really resonate with Monia, what Monia said. You cannot do that intellectually. 
I mean, the intellect is included maybe, yeah, but uh, so it's not only a body thing, but it's a body mind. And in that tradition, they say clear, um, wait, <laughs> clear, deep heart mind. So for that tradition, um, it's the heart where the knowledge is. And um, yeah, <laughs> something changed. I cannot even say what exactly. Um, it's a, yeah, it's more vast, it's more deep, it's more expanded. And in a way, it's um, I think most people talk about enlightenment in a in a, um, like a special event, peak experience, or something like that. And I don't know, I don't want to use that word, but it's it's like, for me, it was more like an, an experience like coming home, N nothing like <laughs> ferocious <laughs> and <laughs> lightning and, you know, this, this peak thing that I expect. And I don't say it's permanent. I, I just say there was an, was an experience and that is deepening now. So, uh, yeah. And a lot of input and working with each other and things like that. And greetings from Eiko. <laughs> She's a trainer now in this program. Yeah. So. Yeah. There is one part of me that would like to talk more or tell more, <laughs> but they don't come out the words so i'm i'm just yeah for now that's <laughs> that's enough about that hi so you're the first people to speak to since since then so i came home just and went to bed right away and That's me. Yeah, to underline the sentence that Munya said, you cannot reach enlightenment through intellectual effort. So yeah, I would really, really say that. Um, for me, the, the word priority always feels like it's a super conscious choice and um, <laughs> I don't know, in my life, it's not like I have set, I've set goals and achieved things, but I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I have a hard time with that word because it seems so much more purposeful than I feel some, uh, some of my life has been. But I do have a post-it note that I wrote on my microwave so I could see it every day. So I guess that's my priority, right? If it makes it uh, to a post-it note, um, it says, look for your joy. Um, and I'm trying to be reminded every day that uh, I guess that's what we're all here to do is to look for our joy um, in life. And uh, Mark uh, Nepo in his book, The One Life We're Given, says joy is that state of being connected to all of eternity and to all things to all time and to all things. So that's what joy is. You know, it, it's that state of completeness and oneness all at the same time. So- um, Can you say that sentence again? I think that's worth 
<laughs> joy, is, joy is the state of connection with um, all, all of time and all things, being connected with all, all of time and all things. That's what he describes joy as. And I think other people call it different things. Probably enlightenment would, would also be a term for that. Um, but there's a number of terms when you feel that oneness, that connectedness with everything. And, you know, you're, you're totally immersed in it. So, um, yeah, my priority is to look for my joy. Um, you all are my priority because it's not easy to be here at eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday. <laughs> so you clearly are a priority to me. Um, and I guess I think of priorities as my own personal priority of, of taking care of myself and um, my well-being, both mental, spiritual, physical, all of those well-being things. And um, but I also prioritize the, the people in my life showing up here and, and connecting with friends, making sure I take time uh, to be with people. Um, the one priority I have that I'm terrible at is making phone calls. Um, I don't like to chat on the phone very much. And every weekend, I have a pretty long list now of people that I would like to call and just check in with people that I don't see and don't have much contact with, but am curious how they're doing. And um, I'd say most weekends go by without me doing any of that. So I, I have good intentions, but I do not fulfill uh, that priority very well at all. Um, yeah, so my, my main priority is uh, to look for my joy. And I think from that, other things will, uh, will flow. And that's it. I so love what you said, Christine. For me, it's very similar. I, when I'm in flow, so I'm, I'm experiencing the ease, a kind of effortlessness almost. And then all things come together without me efforting it. I know I'm in a flow, so nothing can really distract me then because I'm so immersed. You also used the word immersed. And at the same time, um, Victoria used the word that call. It's like a call. It's a similar thing. You're drawn to, I'm drawn to it. So it's almost, I know I'm in alignment with what I'm supposed to be doing. My body, mind, heart, spirit is aligned in those moments. So other things will happen around me and I don't have to think about it because I'm simply just in this flow. And whenever something is aligned with that flow, I will engage in it. And then I'll come back to what I'm doing. So it's not so much a mental thing for me as a whole body, mind thing of something almost pulling me and I'm just going with that flow. And I know exactly when I'm not in that flow. My own state of being shows me immediately whether I'm, whether I'm tired and exhausted or whether I'm um, feeling confused or doubt or whatever it might be. Even when I procrastinate, I know then I'm not in flow. And, I'm, and I sort of know what to do to get back into flow. And it's a practice, sort of, my daily practice. So if I skip my daily practice in the morning, because I'm very creative early in the morning when, when the sun is not up yet, and then seeing the sun rising. So when I'm in a space where I can't see the sun, I'm kind of pulled off track. And then I have to do things to come back on that. So for me also, when I hear the word priorities, I'm also kind of resistant to it on a mental level, or it maybe even my body. And when I heard the word, Monia, when you spoke about it the first time, I was just feeling my body, where do I feel the word? And it was very interesting, I couldn't feel it in my body. So that could be resistant, resistance, or it could be something else. But when I speak about flow, I can feel it. So I'm, for me, that works. Um, and then for me, I'm very creative and intuitive and responsive as well when I'm in that state of flow. Thank you. I'm complete. Actually, I missed your question, Heidi, and jumped on Monia's remarks. 
<laughs> Actually, it was Monia's uh, suggestion to talk about priorities. Okay. And um, yeah, and so I can jump in now because it, I found it twice that people said, uh, also Hanini, um, that the word priority seems, uh, also Christine, no? seems a little bit, oops, as if I choose, do I do this or do I do that or do I do that? And I'm more aligned with what you say, Hanali, to or also Victoria, that being drawn to something. And in a certain sense, what was your previous priority loses attraction, loses power. And uh, yeah, should I do it? Yeah, yeah, maybe if up to a certain point you do it, but it comes out that the other has more value, obviously, more attraction value and then it becomes a priority without you even thinking about it without setting a priority it just comes out and i'm happy that i can allow it to me now because for many many decades of my life i didn't allow me to do that ah you have to do this you have to do that no or other people told me or i told myself that i have to do certain things instead i cannot allow myself just to live you know into the day yeah, no, you have to have a plan, you have to, you know, all this stuff. And it feels, I'm, I feel I'm getting ever more, in this sense, relaxed. It's not relaxed as a body. I'm quite tight, actually. I had some massage going on. But it's, um, how can you say that? I I can allow more. I'm I'm... I'm letting go a little bit of this perfectionism, of this needing to do things, you know? And that's a sort of a freedom, I would, would say, to allow yourself to, to do what comes up and has more energy and then follow it. And if it's the next day, maybe it's not. Mm. And still I'm doing things regularly, like giving water to my plants in my garden, you know? It's not that I don't do it, but what I know I it's important to do, but still it has not so much grip on me anymore. You have to do that, you know? So it's great. I find it freeing, like a liberation. Beatrice, you started with the priorities. I think you need to go on still. I think this is a topic where I'm feeling my my age <laughs> in relation to everyone else. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. I think it's. I'm sure it's possible to to reach some kind of flow and calm and peace even even at my age. But I don't know. For me, it's about survival right now, and that. <laughs> I can't think about thriving until I can survive. I don't know. And I've been thinking a lot about how, you know, I'd love to create more space in my life or maybe even do more of my own work and, and rather than working for other people. But all of that create, requires time and energy and space to set up and to allow to happen, you know, but I don't have the time and space and energy and I can't take the time and space of energy because if I, if I stop any of the things that I'm doing right now, I can't pay my rent. That's like, that's the bottom line. It's like, it's not, I'm not choosing to be busy arbitrarily. And I could, I suppose, stop doing social things or other things in my life. If I just did work, then I would have more time, but then what's, what kind of a life is that? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it all. No, I, I when Hanali, when you were talking, my immediate thought was, well, I guess I'm totally out of alignment because <laughs> nothing feels like flow or ease. I mean, sometimes when I'm specifically working on a project or I'm spending time with the children in whatever context, in there's moments, there's pockets where I feel like I can really dip into something and be present, but kind of zooming out, it's it all feels just like way too full. 
and not quite in alignment. So I don't know. I don't know what to say <laughs> to say to all of this, but except that I, I hope things shift in a different direction at some point. I find it an interesting argument or interesting point that what we experience is also age dependent and situation dependent. Yeah, interesting. I certainly can agree with that because in your age, I was I wanted to do this and that, and, blah, 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 blah. and then with uh, age, you slowly uh, calm down. But you, when you have to pay the rent, I mean. Mm. Uh, you need to find a nice uh, rich husband so he pays the rent for you, but you have to have a husband, uh, you know, that's a choice too, <laughs> which priority. I see Gertrude wants to speak and also Christine, so whoever wants to, also Hanneli, so get in. <laughs> I think survival is ageless, like when you don't have resources to to meet the basic needs then then this is stress <laughs> uh, for everybody and I can resonate very much with it when my children were little one had whooping cough and pneumonia the other one seizures and so I couldn't work possibly <laughs> and my husband was still not my husband but he was uh, in, in university and so we we went on welfare for I don't know nine months or so just yeah to make ends meet and uh, so I know this like um, you have monthly things to pay but get <laughs> paid uh, like almost arbitrarily like yeah so you you have done something and they don't pay you right away and so you cannot pay, <laughs> pay the bills and <sighs> this is um yeah i think mostly it's when when you're younger but but there's still old people that that have to deal with that and and so um yeah i wish you all the best for for that because it's it's like capturing the mind before you can be creative and all this yeah so i can resonate and remember that very well so. I, I was gonna say beatrice <clears throat> Um, give yourself some grace because your life is a long arc. So, you know, you don't have to at 30, you know, feel like I'm supposed to be where I want to be or, or I'm getting to it. You've got a long journey ahead of you. And I think you're doing really well by even as you're doing all these surface things to survive, you have underneath that, obviously this, um, yearning and and sense of more and of yourself so yes we all have to do surface things to survive but you are building and you have i think a good foundation that will follow you you know throughout your life um i when i was your age i was finishing up you know my degree to become a psychologist and while it, it was a priority when I made that choice to pursue my schooling, then once you do that, it's like the next eight years didn't feel like it was a choice at all. It just felt like one hoop after the next, you know, what people are telling me you have to do to get to the end of the <laughs> end of the story. And I was thinking your choice was to go to New York City and you are doing it, you know, and yes, you have hoops to jump through. But, you know, you made a wonderful choice to take that risk and try that out. So, yeah, there'll be a lot of hoops that you have to jump through in the meantime. But you've got that foundation underneath. Don't forget about that. Mm -hmm. 
Ja, Beatriz, you remind me so much of my daughter, of what she's currently going through. And what I want to share with you a little story about her is she's also in a very similar position because she works for herself. And she, start, she made an incredible life choice recently, one a really life-changing choice that puts even more pressure on her to, to, to survive, to be able to live and do the things that she loves to do. And she's also an artist, so she has that artistic nature by itself, which wants to be free. But what's been happening since she made that one decision to have more balance in her life, because she, can, she will just work herself to death as well, just to survive. But since she made that one decision to be more self-caring for more balance, and she re it really took her life into a really different direction, work is coming to her that's paying her lots more for less work. So she's starting to get into that flow that I was speaking about. So it's not too much to try to make it something that looks easy, but because she made that decision to have more balance in her life, to be more self-caring, more time for herself, because she's got that A-type personality to just go perfection, perfection, and to do all these different things to just to survive, suddenly the work is coming to her and it's a lot more abundant than all these other little things that she was doing. So she, and it, it's not something that she even expected. It was just literally coming because she's coming more into, and when I say flow, it's just her true nature of, and our true nature, I truly feel and believe is to thrive, not to su just survive. And like Christine also said, and Gertrude, we've all, when we were your age, we all went through very interesting stuff. And, um, it's not a time thing of, I need to do that tomorrow. I need to get to that tomorrow. It's just for this moment, I'm choosing balance and, and more time for myself. It's interesting what that does to our paths. I'm complete. Um, there were two words, very important. One of them is balancing. Like, uh, once you balance, uh, and this is the second word, you can relax. And relaxing into what is in the moment, into enlightenment, if you want to call it like that. Uh, ah, and Gertrude hears enlightenment, she's up again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gertrude. <laughs> um, so to relax into, what is, uh, is one an, an important aspect, balancing and relaxing. And which to me personally means avoiding stress because I can't be balanced when I have stress. And, uh, and this was maybe one of the priorities, even if you don't like the word because it's hierarchical but it's actually what pulls me where. So it's, uh, if you can feel better with that. Uh, and I was just pulled to balancing less stress and into the moment, more opportunities to be in the moment. Like just now, what does my body do? What does my mind do? What does my soul do right now? And that is, yeah, very, very, nourishing. Thank you. That was my checkout already. <laughs> I can I can go there. <laughs> I just thought, and if you cannot avoid stress, make it your friend. I, I'm mean not the I mean the outside stress. So not be affected so whatever the world throws at you <laughs> so to to be with that and and not let that inner silence be disturbed uh, that's uh, so i want to come back to that word priorities for me it's like to to stay there be in that state what monia was talking about or hanali and doing the work <laughs> and uh, we have a big process at the moment with a company 
So uh, to to do all that stuff to create the interviews and and timetables and all this. So there's a lot to do. And stay, for me, it's like staying calm on the on the inside or doing that with the yeah because it's aligned with who I am. So. So the to do is not to let them stress you, <laughs> something like that. So, yeah, thank you very much, ladies, that you took me the way I just landed. <laughs> and yeah, it's good to see see you over and over again. Thank you, ladies. I'm Monia, since you started speaking about in that present moment, I'm just feeling the energy rushing from my spine, from my top to my toes. And I deeply appreciate that. Thank you that we can part in this beautiful way and complete. Thank you, Hanali. That's um, my checkout too. So <laughs> blessings and thanks to everybody. Well, my checkout is that this was an hour of uh, joy for me. So I thank you all for that very much. Thank you all for the wisdom and we'll, I'll let you know in two weeks <laughs> how, how things have shifted. Thank you all. Emma is happy to be here. Yeah, I also thank you. And I wanted to ask you what I said before. In a month um, on the 27th of October, we will do um, 4D mapping uh, on uh, the situation of the world. And we need some people who play uh, some roles. And you are invited to join us. It will be at six o'clock, Wednesday, six o'clock. And I will, uh, we can connect uh, via email because we are still recording. I, I stop the recording and say, thank you, bye-bye. And you stay with me for a moment, okay? <laughs>